good to see everybody this morning. Thankful to be able to look out and, and see all that we've here this morning. Uh, so this morning, uh, we all we got some little, well, we got a couple things a little different this morning. So I'm so glad that you're here because last last Sunday we, we started, we tried to kind of gave you the test run, so you didn't know it. But so uh, maybe maybe you did afterwards. So we were live uh, on uh, what do you call it? YouTube. YouTube, thank you. We were live on YouTube. And uh, thanks to Eric uh, figuring out how to do all that good stuff, and it works. So we are live this Sunday on YouTube. So that means that not only can I say welcome to the ones that are here in St. Clair, but we can say welcome to those who are watching because it's real time. And if, they're, if you're at home this morning and you're watching, we're so glad to have you with us this morning. So that means we are all together at the same time. Maybe it's some different places, but we're together uh, in real time at the same time. So that's a that's a blessing. Yes, sir. I'd have gotten my hair fixed by another little black. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but it is a blessing, and I want to thank Eric for all the hard work he's putting in to, to make all that be able to, to be possible. And uh, it's a blessing again to be here this morning. I'm, uh, I'm thankful that we have this time together and uh, you pick up a book and on the way in, uh, there's a couple things in there that you need to uh, that you need to know about. There's a calendar for the upcoming. Can you believe it? Today is uh, the end of tomorrow is going to be September. How about that? September. So there's a calendar in there with upcoming events and uh, all that good stuff. Upcoming events as well as uh, the uh, birthdays anniversaries, things that events that we know about, we try to put them in there. If uh, if you're not on there and you're supposed to be, have I called the church office to let us know? We try to make sure we, we get all that stuff in there, but we, we miss some sometimes because we don't go, but uh, we don't do it on purpose. So if you would, if your name is not on the birthday and stuff that needs to be this month, please let us know that, okay? And uh, and that, that's birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, please note, uh, uh, different things coming up this week. Uh, we'll have our deacon meeting, fellowship at 6 p.m., uh, followed by the deacon meeting at 7 this week. That'll be on Thursday evening. Uh, also, fairness is uh, is, is uh, in there. Please don't just use this as a bookmarker or, or just chunk it in the trash. Uh, please look over. You know, I bet there's, uh, there's some names on here maybe that we, we don't know who all the names are. We know most of the names. But somebody's added that name because they they ask us to lift that up in prayer. That's an awesome responsibility for God's people to be able to pray for one another. And, and you know what a what a, what a great opportunity it is that we have that we have that God allows us to participate in uh, in prayer uh, for others. And uh, so please don't just discard that. I do want to let you know this morning, Miss uh, uh, Joyce. Uh, uh, Lois, Lois, I'm sorry, I said, Lois Hoffman uh, passed away uh, this weekend, and uh, she had been, she had been at Warren Hills for a, a while, but uh, she had been at Franklin Lopes folks most recently, but she passed away, so uh, please be in prayer for, for that family, and we uh, can lift things up, but also please uh, take time to, to look at that prayer list, and there's some updates, we need your help on that too. Just some updates. If you know somebody that we've got from you, maybe they're better, we can we can move that name from prayer to praise. That's always a good thing. And if there's somebody that we don't have uh, on here that needs to be on here, we can certainly we can certainly do that, okay? All right. The bulletin. Uh, don't forget about our prayer time two mornings. Mission project for WMU with uh, school supplies. I saw several folks coming up today that had all pools of school supplies. So please read that list and uh, look at those things on there for, uh, for, for what they're doing with that. And please bring those items. I think today, today's the last day. But that doesn't mean that if you haven't had a chance to, you can still come by before the day's on and drop them, drop them here to church if you would. You can put them out there on the porch. Uh, we don't know what the weather's going to be. That's a box out there. You can put them in the box uh, and we'll make sure that they get brought inside. Uh, and don't forget the blessing box, okay? So uh, we still need some help with that. It's an ongoing mission. Blessing box is uh, is uh, certainly a, a great opportunity for us as a church to be able to help in our community. And uh, 
so uh, he gets uh, he gets filled up uh, on a, on a pretty regular basis. I know at least once a week when he normally comes by and, and he'll take inventory and that kind of thing. I don't know if there's any particular items in, in specific that you need. Do you know anything in specific? Um, you could use some like cosmetic type items like toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant. Okay. We've got a pretty good supply right now, some other things, or some canned vegetables like spring beans, corn, peas, something like that. Okay. All right. Well, if you, if you got some of those things that you can that you can share, really please, so uh, please bring those items, and we'll make sure that they they get there. We'll thank him for being uh, he, he, he really does do a good job of taking care of that stuff gets uh, gets in there every week, and uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, ladies, pop up Bible study Tuesday, September the 29th at 6:30 p.m. This is going to be at our house, Debbie Carroll's house. It's going to be in the backyard, so it looks something different. Okay, kind of kind of old fashioned, uh, kind of old fashioned uh, getting together, and to be able to social distance. Do those things it's going to be in the backyard uh so bring what do we bring your chair bring your chair we'll put an insert in the bowl okay we're going to put an insert in the bowl okay but it's bring your chair and, and bring you a drink and i think a dessert will be provided and it's just going to be a, a great time of uh fellowship together so don't forget that that's uh that's september the 29th at 6 30 so we got a little bit of time before that you may get some more information on that. Of course, the Agape giveaway is uh, it's, it's underway. Uh, the, some of the ladies on that committee and maybe some other folks that have been, uh, they've been, they've been sorting through and, and uh, organizing down in the basement and getting all that stuff ready. So uh, if you can come and help with that, please call somebody on that committee and come and help or call the church. We'll get you in touch with somebody so that you can come and help. But, you know, if we, if we all kind of chip in a little bit here, we can't all come at the same time, but we can do it at different times. If everybody knows a little bit, it won't be a lot for or just, a, just a handful of people. If you still have some items to bring, but you have, it's not too late. The only thing you can ask is if you bring any items, especially clothing, please go ahead and sort those. Let's put them in men's and women's and children's. And if you could just put size, that'll help a bunch. Uh, because that, that's, the, that's the biggest part of what they're having to do now is going through and sort of things. And uh, so if you bring them, we still want them. And, uh, but please, if you can help us in that, we just please would, uh, would, bring, uh, would bring those items to be sorted. And I think I started off, I jumped right in here. So if, if you're with us and you haven't been with us, I'm looking around. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing most folks are taking the mask off. You know that when we come in, uh, we, we wear our masks and then as we're seated in our places, if you'd like to take your mask off, if you feel comfortable taking your mask off, you're more than welcome to do that. If you feel comfortable leaving it on, that's okay. You can leave it on as well, okay? So, uh, and then when we, when we finish it, we leave because we can't control the social distancing. We ask that you would please stop if you would be good to put that mask uh, back on just to help try to keep us safe as we come and go. All right. Uh, are there any other announcements that we need to make this morning? All right.
Lord, we ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to work and move you into this place, going out each and every house, each, touching each and every part. And, and Lord, just draw us ever closer to you. Father, we pray for those who are not able to be here this morning, whatever the reason or cause might be. Lord, we know that there are those who are, uh, or those who are at home. And Lord, uh, out, of, out, of a, out of caution and abundance, Lord, uh, they're not with us this morning. And, and Lord, they're still just uh, navigating these waters of gathering back together. And Lord God, we just pray for them and we lift them up. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and healing, those who are uh, expecting uh, uh, surgeries and those kind of things, Lord, and just uh, anticipating uh, those procedures to happen. Lord, we just pray that you would give them a peace and a calmness. Lord, that you would just uh, touch their bodies, Lord, heal them. Lord, we pray for the doctors and the nurses that would be involved in those things, Lord, that you would use them. Lord God, we, we praise you this morning because you're a God who works in everything in every way. And Lord, uh, we just we just come this morning to acknowledge uh, just the, uh, the awesomeness of, of who you are. Father, we lift up those in the nursing home. Lord, we lift up those who are shunning it. Lord, those who are physically not able to come and be with us this morning. Lord, we ask that you would be with them. Lord, that you would strengthen and encourage them. Lord, that you would just love on them this morning. Lord, that you would hold them in your arms. And, uh, Father, that you would let them know that while they may be absent here in this sanctuary, they are present in our hearts. And, Lord, we pray for time. And uh, we'll all be together again. Lord, we pray for all that uh, you have planned in this service this morning. We'll, we'll just praise you and thank you for all that you do. Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And this morning we're going to do something just a little different. So uh, I can ask uh, Karen and Ian if they would sing. So I'm going to ask them to come up and they're going to share some special music. So we can add something a little bit more back to our, our, uh, our worship service. So I want you to know, so I'm, I'm going to expect uh, tomorrow's going to be Monday, right? So I'm going to expect that the phone is going to be ringing off the hook. You're going to be calling me because you're going to want to do a special music, okay, um, as, as we move along. So we're going to add this to the service. We're just do special music, uh, individual or a couple or something like that because you know, we haven't we have had the choir back then. At some point in time, we'll be able to do that. But I know that the music is a huge part of, of, our, of our worship time. I, I've enjoyed, our ladies do a great job playing for us, and uh, I've enjoyed the music that we've had. And this is the way we can add a little uh, back to that. So again, I'm expecting to hear a bunch of phone calls wanting to, wanting to do special music, okay, on Monday. We'll be glad to set up a schedule and get you in there so that you can come and share uh, in, our, in our service. All right, thank you. And if you don't have Bobby's number, get it before you leave. <laughs>
your ideas and your thoughts uh, in these scriptures, Lord, that we would uh, we would know exactly how you would have us to 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 to, uh, to take these words, Lord, and to share these words, to share these scriptures, your word with the lost and dying world. So, Father God, I pray now that you would just give me a uh, plan of thought and plan of speech, Lord, that your word would be uh, hidden from this place. Father, I ask that you would bind Satan and set him outside, Lord, that he'd have nothing to do here this morning. And Lord God, I ask now that you would have your way with us in this very time, in this very moment, in this place. And Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I want to make something uh, kind of a... Uh, 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 a statement here to begin with. Uh, in, in this first verse it says, we know love by this that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Alright? I want to talk about that word brethren uh, for just a minute. Okay? Because the world that we live in today, it would take something just that simple and try to twist it around. It would try to say, well, that's the, you know, it, it's, it's, it's biased because it says brethren. It's talking about just the brother. But that's not what that means at all, right? But the world would want you to think, oh, it's all twisted up. It's got a narrow-minded view. Well, you know what? I tell you what, it is, it is a little bit narrow-minded in some things of how we get to God in his heaven only through Christ's blood on the cross, dead, buried, resurrected. Yes, it's that narrow-minded, but in this word, it's not narrow-minded. That word brethren means all of us. A brother is a man, and a sister is a sister, and brethren are all of us. Okay? That's every single one of us. Nobody's excluded from that. It's men and women, it's boys, it's girls, it's everybody. Our world is a harsh place to live in, isn't it? It is just something that simple right there is a word. The world would like to take that and make it into a whole something that it really that it's not. It would like to take that and just tear it up, tear us up along with it. The way of the world is to put self first. That's exactly what the world wants to do. It wants to put self first. It wants to, it wants us to have self-love and provide for self. Look, I want to get mine first. And if there's anything left over, well, you can have it, but I'm going to get mine first. That is the mindset and the heart set of the world. Don't worry about your brother. Don't worry about your sister. You just get what, what, what works for you. And then if there's anything left, or well, maybe they might have some, you know, they might have a little bit left. The world that we live in is a hard and harsh place. The Bible is clear that the way of the Christian heart, the Christian life, those walking in the ways of the Lord have a vastly different uh, point of view. We have a different way of living. We should have a different way of living. We should look different and we should be different. The world should look at us and they, they should point at us and they should say, they're different. Praise God, I'm different. I want to be different. I hope you want to be different. Right? We, we want to be different. We want to we want to be different. We're taught in the Bible that genuine love for one another is our calling call. That's, that's the big thing. It's that love. It's that thing that started with God and He's passing it on to us. He's pushing it over to us. That is our calling card. That is, that is what people can see us by is that love that we have through God, through Christ Jesus, working and moving in us. We are taught in the Bible that Genuine love, and I call it called, uh, not First John, but just the Gospel of John in chapter 13 and verse 35 says, By this men will know that you are my disciples, you are Christ's disciples. In this that you will know that you are my disciples, they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Right? Right? Love for one another. We also are taught that genuine love enables us to fulfill the commandments of the Lord. That's some things that, that the Lord has said, hey, here's some things. They're not suggestions. They're not strong ideas. They're commandments. These are some things that I want you to do. There's no deviating from it. Do these things. Let's look at that for just a minute. In Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 37, it says, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the great and for, uh, foremost commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends the whole law and the prophets. Okay? You can boil all that stuff down. And look, if, if you get in a bag, you just can't remember, right? It's, it's a lot of stuff to keep up with, right? It really is. It's a lot to keep up with of all the things. But look, if you get in a tight, if you get in a bag, and you, and you got a situation that, and look, man, you just wonder, what do I do? Look, you remember that everything that you are, everything that you got, you love, you love the Lord God first with all of your mind, your heart, your soul, everything that you are. And when you do that, then you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. All right? And I tell you what, if you'll do those two things, I'm going to tell you what, you'll just be amazed at how life will open up. You know, when you get to those places, and it seems like it's going to be a difficult situation, it's, it won't be quite as difficult as you thought it was. The, the, the verses that we have read here this morning tell us that if our love is all that it should be, then it will, dis, it will be displayed in our daily walk. If our love is all that it should be, it'll show up. It'll show up. He can't help but show up. It'll show up in our daily walk. As we go along uh, meeting people and doing the things that we do, it'll show up and show back in our lives as well. Well, this love that, that we have, this love that we have through Christ Jesus, this love is an extensive love. It's, it's not small or compact. It's not, it doesn't have, uh, it can't go, you know, it can't go uh, past this line or it can't go past this line. It has no boundaries. It goes, uh, it goes everywhere. It's an extensive love. So let's look at verse 16 in our text this morning that we just read because verse 16 says, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So let's start here. Let's start on the other end of the on the other end of the spectrum for just a second. So everybody knows Cain, right? Everybody knows who Cain was. So Cain, uh, of course, the Cain sets the biblical marker for self-love for us, okay? Uh, for self-love. In, 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 uh, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he killed him. So that's on the that's on the far end of the spectrum of of an example of a marker in the Bible of self love and, and what and what that'll do that, that self indulgence and self love selfishness. Okay, and then on the other end of that, there's Jesus. On the other hand, he sets the standard for loving others. He says the standards. Okay, so we got to know where 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 we where, where we came from to, to where Jesus is and what He calls us to do. He loved us so much that while we were His enemies, He died for us. Now, if we read Romans chapter five and verse eight, it says, "But God demonstrates His own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us." But if we'll remember that as sinners, unforgiven, we're God's enemy. Doesn't that really put that into a whole different idea? To be God's enemy. You know, Scripture says to get while we while we were yet sinners, God, Christ died for us. You know, this love is freely given. It's freely given and it asks for nothing in return. When we were not able, when we were not able to get to God, He was able to get to us. He, he didn't set any doors up or walls or anything that would allow us not to be able to get to him, him not to be able to get to us. I want to ask a question. Do you love others like you should? 
you know, I'm going to stand up here in front of you this morning and say, oh, absolutely. I've never failed in that particular area of my life. I, I'm, 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 I always love others as I should. And if I told you that, I'd be standing here in this sacred place in front of this pulpit, in this pulpit, and I'd be telling you a lie. And I can't do that because I do fail. I do fail. I think we all, we all probably stumble in that area. Uh, genuine love is clearly described in 1 Corinthians. If you have, if you, if you got your Bible still up, I would ask you to turn. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians together. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. Let's look at chapter 13. And I, I, I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, with this, but I, I think it's important that we look at it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 8. And, uh, you know, we hear this a lot of times, especially at a wedding or that kind of thing, but, uh, you know, it speaks to us all the time. I, I don't know why we don't really, really use it at a wedding. Uh, so we, we, should be, we should be living this out every day. It says, if, uh, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not love, I have nothing. And if I give all my possessions, Feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag, it is not arrogant, does not act unbecoming. It does not seek its own, is not provoked does not take into account the long suffering, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bearing all things, leaving all things, hope, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be Done away. If they are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. Love never fails. Now let's look back at our text that we were in. Let's look back. Let's look back at verse 17. Our text this morning. That thought. In first John in verse, in, in verse 17 says, But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does, how does the love of God abide in him? Is what this scripture says. So this love, this love that, that God has shared with us that we have, this love is an expensive love. Do you do you want to see uh, what love is? Do you, okay. Do you want to see what love is? Yes. yes. Do you want to see what love is? Look at the cross. Look at Calvary. Amen. That's what love is. That's what love is. Just look so far at Calvary. Look and see the Lord Jesus. In everything he had to save those that love. That's you and me. That's us. That's the world. He gave that gift to the world. Jesus, Jesus showed us the truth that true love, freely given. It's, and, 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 it's, and gives away everything 
it has those that it loves. You know, I I I, I really believe you know that. And this is this is my commentary or my thought. You know that. Uh, you know, that's why we. That's why the hands of Jesus are so important. Because he opened those hands. And they wrote nails into those hands. That we might know his love for us. He pours that love out on us. He, he saw our need. You understand when he was on the Calvary Cross, when they were taking him to the cross? And they were beating him as he went along the way, and they, they had scourged his body. <clears throat> do, you, do you realize that, that on, on the way to the cross, he saw our need? You know, wouldn't it have been so easy for Christ to have said, Well, I know you have a need. I know you're lost and you're undone in your sin. Maybe somebody else. Maybe somebody else could take care of you. But he didn't say that. He said, I see your need. And you know what else he do? Because he was God wrote in flesh. He knew. He knew that he possessed the necessary resources to meet that need. He and he are him and what he had his precious blood was the only thing that would atone for our sins. He alone possessed the necessary resource to meet that need. You know, that's what love is all about. does not hold anything back. It meets the needs wherever it finds it. However it finds it. James chapter 2 verse 15 says, if a brother or sister is without clothing in, in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and be filled. And yet you do not give them what is necessary for their bodies. What use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. They have to go together. Faith, we have to have that. Faith has to come first. But I'm going to tell you what, when you have that faith, you get that faith, you can't help but do anything but work. You're going to want to do it. You're going to be moved to do it. You're going to be compelled to do it. We need to remember that God has given us everything we have in this life so that he might be glorified in that everything that we have every possession that we have everything that we have is because he has given it to us and he expects us and wants us to use that that he might be glorified in that it might be money it might be materials it might just simply be a moment Just a minute. Just a minute. You know, he can and he'll use all of those things. If we'll just make it available to him. See, he's not going to come and he's not going to take it away from him. But we have to freely come and give it to him to be used through him, by, uh, through us, by him. All right, we'll finish up here. Verse 18 says, Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. So this love, this love is an expressive love. It's, it, we show it. It, it. it shines out. It stands out. It, 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 it can be seen. A genuine love does not just talk. Genuine love acts. It gets up. It walks around. It, you know, uh, 
Well, I was going to say it shakes hands, but we have all kinds of time in our lives. It fist bumps. That's what it does. Fist bumps. But look, look, genuine love does not just talk, it acts. I want you to think about something. Okay, everybody please close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. And I'm going to read in John 3.16. I want you to think about these words. As, as, as I read them, and y'all listen, okay? So John 316 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And he guys, I want you to think about these words. What would those words mean? Burdens. 
Are you willing to do that this morning? Are you willing to do that? Man, I know there's some days. <laughs> we just got our own burden. Man, we got a wheelbarrow full of no. Man, we do. Man, we're, we're doing the best we can do just to get that, that wagon pushed along or pulled along, right? We got our own, but you know, it doesn't say that anywhere in there. Well, look, if your wagon's already full, don't worry about nobody else. I know that's hard, man, because I'm going to tell you what. I know when my wagon's full, it's hard. It's hard. But, but the scripture says to bear one of those words, that could be just a somebody needs to love. You can just let them know what you're thinking about. And then it says, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. What we're called to do, it's just what he said we ask us to do. To bear one of those words. You might not even understand why somebody's got that burden. You might not understand what it is that they're dealing with, but just be willing to bear with me. Come along the side of it. Put your arm around them. I know we ain't supposed to say things like that. Put your arm around them or hug them or whatever. I don't know. You know I'm going to just tell you this. You do whatever the new Lord tells you that you need to do. If it means hug them, hug them. I don't know. If it means put on two masks and hug them. Do that. I don't know. Take, take all the masks off. I don't know. I said I'm going to say I don't know. <laughs> but I do know I know it calls us to love each other to love one another we can do that because we belong to you let's pray together Heavenly Father we thank you for our time together this morning Lord God we just pray that you would just uh, Lord help us each and every day be all that you would have us to be. Lord, help us to look out and see a world that is struggling. Father, we don't have to look too far to see that. And I know that you know it. But Lord, give us a heart to care, a heart to love, a heart to help. Lord, even if we look at somebody and they look different than we do, Maybe they're doing it different than we are. Lord, help us to love in all situations and all circumstances. Help us to love as you have loved us. Father, I pray for that one this morning. And I know this congregation does. Lord, we pray for that one who's lost and unknown in their sin. They hear the word love, maybe. Nobody's ever acted on that for me in their life. Lord, I pray that as we finish up and we go about our way this morning, you can give each one here, each one that's gathered here, whether it be in the sanctuary or wine, where it might be. Lord God, if you would give us a heart to, to share the gospel, give us a boldness. Lord, give us words that we didn't even know we had. That the world would know your love. Lord, help us to do it. One soul at a time. That you might be glorified in all this feeling and all this. And Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hear an invitation this morning that's open my eyes that I may see. All is open this morning. All these will come and take a play for us. If you'd like to come and pray, please do so. Uh, please be respectful of my afternoon. There's others of you who will keep some space.
If you'd like to pray uh, with me, I'll be glad to come see you after service. We can pray in a more, in a more private uh, setting. But let's do it. Please come and pray to all of us over the last Just come and let Jesus speak to your hearts. Thank you.